it's that natural human desire to seek out that get rich quick scheme. And uh, I think uh, crypto being that new asset class where you're seeing people make insane amounts of money and, and some making generational wealth that people coming in think, oh, yeah, I'm going to snap my fingers and that's going to be me as well. I agree. Yeah, it's it's not like that. It, it, it really comes down to having having a plan. Um, it's like a lottery. You know, you go to the you go to the store um, and you buy a lottery ticket in, in hopes of hitting it big. And the chances of that happening are slim, slim to none. And that's the same thing with buying one coin and it you know, watch village own be that one coin. And I'm like sitting on it. I'll, I'll talk about it in a little bit because this is actually performing really well. Um, I do hold a Velodrome, just a disclaimer, um, that this is something I do hold. Um, and it's working out pretty well. And I'm paying myself and I'm position sizing accordingly and <clears throat> have proper risk, which I'd love to talk about. Um, but what I'm trying to say is there's no, no one has a crystal ball. Unless you're from back to the future and you're making these crazy, there's no way. Um, and that's why it's important to identify risk identify a proper position size, understand your entry, understand your exit, just simple systems to follow, which we can give you those systems, but are you going to follow those systems? Are you going to be emotionally intelligent and disciplined? Cause that's psychology is 90% of the game, you know? Um, yeah. One of, one of the questions that, you know, you're often asked, I I'm asked, I'm sure you're asked anybody that knows anything about Bitcoin and crypto is like, how much should I invest? And that's not a question that anybody you're asking can or should really answer. That's all based on your situation, your circumstances, how much you make, your bills. Like you got to be no matter what it is. And again, this is not financial advice of where to put your money, but I think this is just life advice. You should never be doing anything investing wise, whether it be real estate, whether it be stocks, whether it be, you know, crypto, whatever you decide to try to grow your money in, you should never be putting house money, everything that you have into that place. Because if that goes, like you can't make smart decisions when there's too much emotion tied to that. So if, if I'm, let's say I only have a thousand dollars to my name, right? And that's all that I have. And I take that thousand dollars and I put that into investment A. Well, all my emotions are tied into that investment and I can't make smart, sound decisions that might help me to actually make money in that investment if I'm all tied up in emotions. And if that money is all gone, then, you know, it hasn't a significant effect in my life. Right. And I like how you said that you can't be a slave to your emotions. They can't dictate your trading strategy. And a perfect example of this, a perfect example, not financial advice, disclaimer, I do hold Velodrome, which is an automated market maker, AMM. Uh, it's a fork of curve Dow on the, the of, on the optimism chain, but just, I'm not going to get dive in, deep into what the, the product is and stuff. Um, all I can say, I'm going to, from a price action perspective, um, this is something that is a perfect example of position trading. And again, not financial advice. This is what I did and what worked for me. And I think you guys can find value from this and goes back to what we were saying that you're not going to perfectly time the top. Have you guys ever heard of this approach, dollar cost average? I'm sure, Don, we talk about it all the time. Yeah. DCA, you know, you build an average. Uh, can you just explain DCA to the to the viewer? Yeah. So I'm going to give you an example of a DCA for me that didn't that didn't start out great, but has has made itself uh, actually work out for me because of the strategy of DCA. So in the last bull run, um, I was heavy in holding just Bitcoin. And I started to dabble into some uh, alternative coins. I got caught up in the meta, you know, the metaverse hype and, uh, you know, Sandbox and uh, Decentraland were the big tokens that everybody was was talking about. And they were pumping. And I was like, hey, you know, yeah, maybe I want to get a piece of some of this metaverse and some of these tokens. So I bought some Sandbox. And my initial Sandbox entry was in like the three or four dollar range. And I bought I bought a couple coins there. And I was basically the exit liquidity. I was the top. I was wherever that top was. That's that's where I was buying. Wherever that top is, I was probably buying. Actually, the top had already passed, and I was on the way down when I was buying. So you were so buying. My, during, you were buying during this period. Yes. Yes. That's yes. During the offloading zone. Okay. Yes. So I was the exit liquidity of all the people that were cashing out their profits of the people that were making the money at the bottom over there. Yeah. The, so, so quickly, I, I don't mean to interrupt. In no. Saber. No. Go ahead. Save your thought. Um, so he, the the smart investors were buying during the accumulation 
or the speculation phase. Sorry, this is the speculation phase. Um, and this is the retail zone. So you bought when the, the risk was the highest uh, during the offloading zone, which is fine yep. as long as you bring your average down. Yeah, so the, 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 the point of the story is, I bought there. I seen, you know, the market was taking a turn that we were going into a bear market. The coin was going down, but I, but I was researching the metaverse and I was researching like the technology and I, and I was thinking way more long-term than just, Oh, I put my money into something that's going down. So I made the personal decision that I was going to continue to buy this token and I was going to dollar cost average into that token. And I've done so since, since that initial buy, I think it was at the end of 21 or maybe it was early 22. I, I can't remember when that first purchase exactly was, but I've been dollar cost averaging to the point now that my initial entry, I just made another purchase yesterday, small purchase, nothing big, like 30 bucks, 35 bucks. And my entry point now is a, a dollar 1.00, like one five is my, is my entry now. And, and the tokens are trading somewhere around, I think between 70 something cents. So, I mean, I'm only, I'm only 30 cents away from complete break even. So uh, what is that? A 30, 30%. And that's really, yeah. Not yeah I mean, it, and, and again, like we're in a bear market. So that's a, that's a token that, you know, a little backstory, you got, you got Snoop Dogg buying, you know, plots of land in there and you got a lot of technology that's going, it's, it's, it's not something, I mean, Facebook rebranded the metaverse or to, to meta. So, I mean, it's not going anywhere. It's, it's going to have its, it's going to have its day again, this next bull run. So I'll continue to dollar cost average. And, and eventually, you know, it's not going to take much to be in profit. Like mm -hmm. if I get that down to like 80, 90 cents, it's easy that they think can go back to two bucks and then I'm up a hundred percent. Like where, yeah. where else, what other markets are you going to get that in? And again, that's not, I'm not telling you to buy that. I'm not telling you that's going to happen. It's not financial advice, but that's the strategy. That's the, the, the philosophy of what I'm doing with my money. The conviction we talk about. You know, and again, for, for somebody like me, that's just been like super heavy Bitcoin, 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 you know, even myself, like being in the space since 2013, doing this pod and, and talking with Troy all the time is, is even helping to change a little bit of my mindset, you know, my stubbornness of being, you know, Bitcoin only and, and opening up my, my, my eyes to other things that, that can make me value. Again, I don't, I don't, I don't like to just say money. It's, it's really value, and something I want to talk about a little bit as this podcast goes on with first principles, like understanding what value is, like what I, what you can do with value, and what value, you know, brings into your life. Yeah, and that's a perfect example of him dollar cost averaging, bringing the average down, and now he's not down as much. Instead of putting in a hundred percent of his position size at seven dollars, he put a little bit there. A little bit on the way down, a little bit at four bucks, a little bit at three, a little bit at one, a little bit at 50 cents, and you're averaging it out. You can't time the bottom. And that's exactly goes into my example on Belladrome. Um, I got I got to say a thousand disclaimers because I do hold Belladrome. Um, I got a nice chunk of change in there, but it's risk free. So when I say dollar cost average in, you can also do the opposite. You can dollar cost average yeah. out. Yep. Um, when you're taking profits. Yep. And that's one of my biggest mistakes is not trying to time the perfect top, you know, sell a little bit. Now I like to, let's say I have 15,400 shares. I'll sell 400 shares and then I'll sell 200, bring it back to a whole number. Like I was sitting at like 11,537 shares. I sold um, 1,337. You know what I mean? Bringing it down. Mm -hmm. Now I'm sitting at 10,000 shares and it's risk-free. So I got 10,000 shares. It's risk-free. I'm not emotional because I took some risk off the table and that is uh, emotionally attached to the, the price. So if it does pull back 50%, I'm not going to be like, damn it. I should have sold. It's like, you know, it's whatever. I followed my plan. I followed my systems. If it keeps going up, that's great. I still got skin in the game. That's fine. And if it goes down, that's great. I took some off the table. I can either buy more or, you know, I, I just had, a, I had an exit plan. So dollar cost average, you don't have to sell 100% of your position at the very top. Like, let's go back to your sandbox example. Uh, you can see my screen right here. Let's go back to deck screener. Let's try to find, I'm trying to find uh, the chart where you can see the big, right here. All right, so let's say for the people that were buying during the speculation zone, um, the, the early adopters, you know, they're, they're accumulating. They're like, okay, this could be a narrative. Um, just like how I think 
The later two ZK rollups are going to be a narrative. So we're in the speculation phase. All right. As it makes its initial pump, like, you know, it went from three cents to a dollar 17. That wasn't the real pump. You know, that was still during the speculation phase, even though it went up from three cents to that's what crypto does. Um, but let's say you didn't sell or you did sell some down here. You still have skin in the game for when it goes up and you're not going to time the very top. You know, sell a little bit here, sell a bit here, sell a bit here. Now, financial advice, this is what I'm doing is I'm just dollar cost averaging out. And that's a safe, you know, mitigate risk. And that's how you control your emotions. So let's take a look um, at the total crypto market cap. We're sitting at one trillion. And we're, we're accounting for all the cryptocurrencies to be in existence. Um, and we're- that's about, the, the stable coins, right? Yeah, and stable yeah. coins. Yeah. Yeah. We can see the 200 day moving average. We're breaking above it. We had a new weekly candle open and close above this 200 day. So if you look at this really quick, each candle represents one week. You know, this one week candle, it opened below the 200 day, but it closed above the 200 day. And then the new weekly candle opened above. So that's bullish. You know, we're break. It's. I feel like we're going to have a parabolic move either to the upside or the downside. I don't know. Um, we know we have Fed. Talking at ten fifty today. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I know they're talking. They're, they're they just released some minutes the other day. They're going to talk today. Okay. And that whenever they're speaking, just be careful. It's volatile, volatile during those those speeches. Yeah. Yeah. So that yeah. So that's wrapping up. You know, my biggest mistake is just have a plan. You know, be disciplined. I I can sound like a broken record. You know and. You know, let the, you can't control, you can't, the market doesn't owe you anything. You know, you, you don't, don't think the market owes you something. You just play with a proper plan. The the biggest mistake that anybody can make in investing, period, again, just investing is allowing your emotions to dictate your actions. Mm -hmm. You, the, you know, whenever I speak finances with people, you know, everybody's like al already thinking of the end game before they even like put their money down. You can't think like, okay, I, I got this, this, this uh, amount of money and I want to make this look like this in six months. Or how do I do this where I can, you know, get this thing paid for that I got coming up nine months from now? Like if you put, if you put like a specific time frame on an investment, it almost always won't work out because markets do not, they don't just, you know, come right into your perfect little area of when you need to make the money. That's not how it works. They don't care so you about have to. No, they don't care about what your time frames are, what your time zones are. Like you have to have a strategy. And again, the best possible strategy you can have in investing is, you know, investing money now and and, and thinking long term. Like it, as much as Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger are complete idiots when it comes to crypto, when it comes to investing, they're they're two of the best that have ever done it and probably ever will do it. And they say if you can't hold something for 10 years, don't hold it for 10 minutes. You know what I mean? Like they, they hold things that they've hold, held for decades. You know what I'm saying? Like their wealth, their billions of dollars that they're that they're that they're they're worth is all basically assets. Like they, they don't they don't buy something and say, oh, how much cash can I can I have? How many piles of cash can I have at the end of the day? It's like they understand that the assets is what brings the value. You want to accumulate valuable assets. And to, so you to, should be seeking out, you should be seeking, again, some of these coins that, that we buy, I know this is the strategy that I'm taking, like I'm trying to find coins that'll bring the value, not necessarily the money, the value, so I can use that value to put into assets that I'm going to hold long term. Exactly. And that's exactly what I'm going to say is, don't get me wrong, you could have coins that you don't want to hold for 10 years. They're mm -hmm. called narrative trades. They're called yeah. trades. You trade well, in, this, in this market. We with the four year cycles, you you're you're able to do those type of things as well. And that's it's a lot more predictable. Like I know when I take profits, like like when I'm selling my velodrome and I'm taking profits, I'm taking profits into Ethereum because I know for a fact, not financial advice, and I don't know for a fact, you know, anything could happen. Sorry to say that. Um, that I know Ethereum will most likely break all time highs, so I'm taking profits into Ethereum. And if Ethereum goes down, that's fine. These altcoins might, if, if Ethereum drops 5%, these altcoins could drop 30%. So I'm mitigating risk, taking risk off the table, taking profits into Ethereum, not necessarily USD because it's still early. You know, I think 2023, um, these next couple months, we're going to get another move higher. I think at the end of the year, we're going to have a pullback. Uh, it's going to shake the markets. All the, and then we're going to have the pre-havening uh, drop. And then 
you know, 2024, it's 2024 is going to be a fun year. Um, yeah. I'm excited to be building now. I'm going to be making these podcasts today, next Thursday, and a year from this Thursday. And I hope you guys are with us. We do. We want to talk a little bit about the newsletter we just dropped. Yep. We're going to have that in the show notes. Um, it's basically every, you know, we'll try every day during the week. You know, you enjoy your cup of coffee. Just shoot through the podcast. We're going to try to put the the, the, the morning highlights in the beginning and bulletin so you can kind of like um, have a TLDR of what's going to be talked about. So you don't have to spend, you know, a lot of people don't like reading. Um, so we're going to try to juice out all the important notes in the beginning. Um, and then you can have something to have, have guidance, uh, price quotes, what our thoughts are. Um, and I, let, let me say something. I don't say get subscribe to a bunch of newsletters. Like there's a bunch of great newsletters out there that you should be exposed to and filming your own thesis based off your thoughts, not on one newsletter or one podcast you know, follow a bunch of great accounts and then see what, and then you can, you know, maybe you, you don't find value in this podcast. You want to go, that's fine. You're not hurting our feelings. You know, this is just something we're passionate. We want to do. Um, so we're going to put in the, the newsletter link in the show notes, put your email in, subscribe, and then you'll be getting alerts right to your phone. Um, we also have our Instagrams and Twitters in the show notes below. So you can smash the like button, subscribe, so you can get alert every time our podcast drops. And, you know, that's just a little bit about about the newsletter. It's free, so you don't have to pay any money. It's completely free, and it's, it's you know, our, our, what we're trying to give you guys. Yeah, and again, you know, the it's a bear market right now, so the the, the eyes overall aren't on crypto like they like they will be when it's when it's a bull bull run, and maybe some people are watching this video in the in in the future, you know, six seven months down the line, and they come across this video. So we sh will continue to say like share this with other people that you know are also seeking information. Um, you know, value, like I said a little bit earlier, isn't just about money. Like value, knowledge is value. Like as much as you can possibly learn about something that can bring your life to a better place. And again, you know, unfortunately money is, is what kind of, you know, helps you advance, like whether you like money or not, the, the more you accumulate it of it, the, the easier your life can be and the easier that life can be for the people that you care about. So finding ways to accumulate more value uh, should be something that you do uh, uh, unselfishly, you know, not just for yourself, but for, like I said, for the people that you care about family members, friends, like, the more you can learn about how, and again, I want to talk about what money is in a little bit too. You, you just let me know when you're ready for that. But like understanding what money is and and, and the value of it and and the things that you care about, like the experiences are are are, you know, one of the most important things that you can do in life. Having experiences with the people that you care about, and a lot of experiences unfortunately have a price tag to it. So if you don't have a lot of of assets and money, then you're kind of pigeonholed and, and rigid in, into the kind of experiences you can have and, and the joy that you can bring to yourself and the pe people that you care about. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we encourage you guys to find a sense of community, like go find other crypto investors and just build with them. Cause like you, you don't have to do it alone. You know, um, there is community. Um, yeah. So I want Don to dive into his thoughts on money. Um, so if you want to be so kind and share, share your thoughts on that. Yeah. You know, you were talking about other podcasts and, and there's one that, uh, you know, kind of like spawned this thought that I had today. It's called what is money by Robert Breedlove. He's got a really good podcast. He's got like 500,000 subscribers. He talks about, he's a Bitcoiner. Um, he, he's a, he's kind of like me, borderline maxi, but he does, you know, he's open-minded to other things as well. Uh, but he really understands the concept of money. So I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to break it down with with an example today to to kind of understand, like, you know, what money actually is and going back to like first principles. So I, I'm, I'm going to use props. OK, so I'm, I'm, I got a twenty dollar bill right here. OK, can you see that? Yeah, this twenty dollar bill, you probably can't see it. But at the bottom of this twenty dollar bill, it's got the uh, series which says two thousand and seven. So this bill was created in two thousand and seven. All right. So if we think about that, if we think about this bill when it was created, we can both agree that this twenty dollar bill in 2007 had a lot more buying power than it does today. Right. Yeah, we can agree on that. Yeah. So I'm going to show you something else. Can you see that? Yeah. Can you see the top what it says? 1964. 
So this is a quarter from 1964. Okay. So if you took five of these quarters right here, it would have the same face value as this $20 bill. Cause these are right around $4 each in silver value. So you got a $20 bill right here. Five of these would be the value of this. So if you think about the face number of when these were created and what they've gone through since they were created like this in 1964 was created to be a 25 cent piece and it was 25 cents and it had 25 cents of buying power. This created in 20, uh, 2007, $20 of buying power. If you were to hold long-term something, which would you want to hold long-term? Would you want to hold this $20 long-term or would you want to hold this 1964 quarter long-term? Well, you think the $20, right? See, most people would think that, right? You would think that $20 would be what you would want to hold. But when this $20 was created, it's done nothing but lose buying power, right? The $20 in 2007 bought a whole lot more goods and services than it will buy in 2023. So if I held this $20 bill, put it under my mattress, I would have been better served to spend this in 2017 and buy the value I could have, I'm sorry, 2007 and buy the things I could have bought then because that stuff would have held more value for today. If I would have bought $20 worth of these in 2007, I would have a lot more of these quarters, but this $20 bill would buy less than it would buy then. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because in 1964, this has done nothing but appreciate in value. Since 2017 or 2007, this has done nothing but depreciate in value, right? So if I were to walk- Silver's holding its value. Silver's holding its value and in increasing buying power. This is not holding value in decreasing buying power. But if you were to poll 10 people on the streets, nine out of 10 or maybe 10 out of 10 would tell you that this is better money than this because this is a quarter and this is a $20 bill. So most people, most people will think I would rather have $20 than five of these quarters when realizing that if I hold this $20, the buying power of this is going to be less than the buying power of five of these. So people, the point I'm trying to make is you have to understand- Smaller quarters. Well, it's, it, it, that's just the, you know, the prop that I'm using for this, but you have to understand when you're buying something, what is the value of what you're buying? What are you, are you buying what's, what it's valued at today? Or am I valued at what it's going to do in the future? Right? Because a lot of people are still stuck in the old school thought process where I make my money and I put it in the bank because I feel safe because it's in the bank and I can go grab it. Even if I'm only getting one, two, 3% of interest, I know that when I go to the bank, I can get my money out. Right? And the longer you hold it in the bank, the less buying power you have with that. But if you buy actual assets that will appreciate both hold value and appreciate value, then you will have more buying power in the future. If you can't break that thought process, if you can't understand that concept, you will never, ever be able to build generational wealth and accumulate assets that will both hold value and accumulate value, right? Right. So if you walked up to people on the streets and you said, hey, I will give you, you have a choice. I will give you this $20 bill or I will give you five of these quarters. I would guess, hands down, at least nine, if not all 10, take this $20 bill and think that they got me. Right? And that's, and that's, and that's only because, you know, people don't really understand money. So I want to peel back this banana and tell people, before you even start doing any of this kind of investing and come to us or come to, you know, what is money podcast or bankless podcast or your real estate favorite podcast, or, you know, you want to go watch the all in podcast with, you know, those guys talking stocks before you do any of that, understand what it is that you're dealing with. Understand what money actually is because the quicker and the faster that you grasp that concept, the bigger your portfolio is going to get. Just by understanding that concept, understanding what where real value actually is, because if you can't get that concept, don't invest anything. That's that's financial advice. Don't don't put your money in anything until you understand what the hell you're doing. Yeah, I think that's fair enough to say that that's financial advice. Don't invest if you don't know what the hell you're investing in. And no matter what anybody's trying to tell you or no matter how, what anybody idea they can give you. If you don't understand first principles of money, you got to go back. You got to go back and learn that. You might have to go back to economics, economics 101 
in the most nice way possible, not trying to hurt your feelings. No, no. Yeah. Again, that's value. That's that's knowledge. That's knowledge that you're gaining. That's value that you're receiving that can assist you in whatever journey you're trying to make to better yourself and your family financially. Yeah, absolutely. Protecting your purchasing power and understanding inflation, understanding, you know, that if you're holding a worthless piece of paper, you're better off not financial advice, BTC question mark, ETH, SPY, DAO, anything. Um, but if you don't understand that concept, just you're better off just investing in your education question mark. I think if, if you really don't understand, if you're just new to this, take a step back. You're not going to get rich in the stock market or crypto market overnight. Invest in your education. Um, you know, we have free newsletters. There's thousands of newsletters out there, thousands of videos. Go find them. Um, and, you know, that should help. You know, I, I, sh I shared it before. I found Bitcoin through my investing in gold and silver. That's how I stumbled across Bitcoin. So mm -hmm. I it, I was lucky enough to understand what I just told you about what money actually is and understanding first principles. And again, even understanding all of that, when I first was introduced to Bitcoin, I was still resistant and hesitant towards it even being a thing. I thought it was a scam for the first you know, five or six months that I heard about it. So it took really diving into it to understand what it really was and how it had all the five principles of money and, and, and did a step better than even gold before I even like really, I had to really like research before I really understand. And, and I think that that's important, especially now in, in, in this high, like, you know, the, the new cycles over in like 24 hours, 48 hours, like you hear something and then you consume it and then you're, you're on to the next thing. Like sometimes you just got to take a step back and like, really, before I do anything, I need to understand what it is like, okay, yeah, everybody said buy Dogecoin and buy Shiba and everybody pumped all their money into it, but they never even knew what they were really putting their money into. I'm not, I'm not saying it's a good or a bad thing because people made money, but people also lost money, but people didn't know what they were buying. Like you don't know you don't know anything about what you're putting your 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 hard-earned money into. You should really understand. And again, that's another reason why we say this isn't financial advice, because I don't want to tell you what to do with your hard-earned money. I want you to understand and, and when, when you get advice to feel confident that you're making the right decision because of what you understand, not because yeah. of what guy, some guy like me is telling you or what some guy like Troy is telling you or somebody else. Like You need to understand, really understand what Advice is no good if you don't understand the advice that you're being given. Absolutely. We can lead you to the water, but I can't stick your head in to make you drink. You know? No, you can't. You got to make that decision. You guys are – so in the show notes below, you can see the newsletter link. Um, you can see that we have some articles here. You know, what is free, decoding the cryptoverse. Bitcoin begins 2023 with its most successful start in history. Uh, a passive passive income strategy. So staking, free guides, free, free, free. Being Everything. sold nothing. It's all free information. Learn. Yeah. Just subscribe to the to the newsletter. We have all our socials right here. We'll also put them in the in the show notes below. Um, yeah, we, we weren't recording, Don. We're gonna have to restart the whole podcast. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was good stuff. I Can I really put questions in the comments if you have a question of anything or something you want us to talk about like if you're watching this and, you, and you're and you didn't understand something that we talked about put it in the in the notes put it or put it in the comments uh ask questions i mean you know we're, we're still relatively small so if you ask a question it's going to get answered and there are no dumb questions no dumb questions the only dumb question is not asking any questions yeah I had a teacher tell me one time, there are no dumb questions, only dumb people. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> um, yeah. So we're going to, we're going to get ready to wrap this up here. Um, like I said, leave a like, smash the subscribe button, share with a friend. Um, I, we're going to be eventually be doing giveaways in the future. Um, yes. Goals, other fun, you know, games, memes of the week, stuff like that. Like I said, just join the newsletter. You got nothing to lose besides five seconds of your time every single morning. Read. So yep. I ready. And that's it. Um, with our second podcast, we're building in a bear market. Bitcoin's below 25 K. Ethereum's below. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, so 
we might have a little selling going on right here on Bitcoin. Where are we at? Oh no, we're at 30, 24K. Okay. So, that's good. All righty. That's it for today, guys. Take care. Don't trust verify. <laughs>